Coming up on Golf Central, Monday was media day for the next men's major. The U.S. Open at Oakmont, it's 52 days away, and Tiger Woods, he's registered. And we'll have the very latest on whether we may see Tiger Woods return to competitive golf. Plus, we'll talk about what kind of expectations he will face being eight-plus months removed from his last competitive start. Also ahead, it's a huge day in the chase for the NCAA Women's Championships. The dream will become reality for 72 teams across the country. Who's in and who has the toughest road to a title? It's all ahead in our live selection show right now on Golf Central. Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. Here are the top stories for the week ahead. Tiger Woods registered for the 2016 U.S. Open on April 4th, but it does not mean he will play. We'll have the very latest on Tiger's potential return coming up. This just in, Charles is out. Schwartzel following Louis Ustase and saying he will not play in the Summer Olympics. The next South African to qualify would be Jaco Van Ziel. And world number three, Rory McIlroy announcing he will skip the WGC Bridgestone Invitational to play in the European Tours French Open. Remember, Rory won in Akron back in 2014. Some of the most dramatic golf we saw on TV last year didn't happen on the professional level. Instead, it was the match play finale in the Women's NCAA National Championship at Concession Golf Club in Bradenton, Florida. The Stanford Cardinal putting together a rally to remember claiming its first title in program history. Hard to believe a year has already passed, but here we go. We're ready for it. Four women's regional sites will be unveiled tonight. The road to this year's national championships goes through Stanford, California, Bryan, Texas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Shoal Creek, Alabama. You think the teams and the players and the coaches are excited? How about the mascots? Hello, Mr. Mizzou Tiger. He is eagerly awaiting to find out where his ladies will be headed. Welcome in. A lot to get to tonight on Golf Central. We'll be discussing everything happening in the world of golf, and it's a lot. But our focus is on the ladies in the college ranks. If you're having a watch party tonight, we want to see your team. Send us your videos using the hashtag NCAA Golf. Who better to guide our way than our college golf insider, Steve Burkowski, Ryan Labner. Berko, let's start with you. Set the stage for us. Well, this is it, Lisa. This is why all the schools, all the players, all the student athletes work so hard. Eight months of diligence and practice and preparation comes down really to this point of the season. You get through conferences. You want to get a regional bid, Ryan, and it's a regional bid that hopefully gets you to the national championships, but this is arguably the most stressful week of the year. Oh, without a doubt. It's the most paranoid week of the entire season. It doesn't matter how many wins you had. It doesn't matter what your national ranking is. If you don't finish in the top six in this tournament, your season's over. All right, let's get some facts to set up this whole night. You need to know all of this heading up to the national championships in Eugene, Oregon, taking place May 20th through the 25th. 28 automatic bids, 44 at-large selections are up for grabs. 18 teams will compete in each regional site. The top six teams from each region will advance to the NCAA championships. Teams from all over the country are watching us tonight. Hello, everybody. They're eager to find out where they're going, waiting to find out their regional location site. We'll get to see all of their reactions live right here on Golf Central. Some of these teams will be spotlighting from the SEC, the University of Alabama, University of Missouri, and then we go to the Big Ten, Michigan and Indiana waiting away. Lisa, pleased to be joined by Peter Fields now, the chair of the Division I Women's Golf Committee. And Peter, before we move ahead to 2016, let's take a look back a year ago, the first year that the women went to match play, the drama, all the excitement at concession. What has the response been from what happened in 2015? It's been a tremendous response, Steve. And uh, you were there and you could, uh, anybody that was there or watched it, uh, the response to the uh, the 24 holes where Lauren White and uh, Lisa uh, McGuire went uh, 24 holes, it was just amazing. And then Haley Davis and, and uh, Mariah Stackhouse go 19 holes in the finals, and and we couldn't have scripted it. It was just the most. Uh, uh, it was a it was a great week of golf. Well, as you look to duplicate some drama in Eugene next month, it really all starts right here. 72 teams, four regional sites. How do you guys fill that number, and how do you try to equally distribute it across the country? 
Well, we have 72 teams. We have 20. We had 28 automatic qualifiers and 40, like you said, 44 at large. Uh, we use uh, we start at number one and and uh, use a criteria that's laid out with our head-to-head -head and stroke play, uh, stroke differential, and then we um, fill in the chart and then we try to balance it out on lines so that we make sure that we uh, have to the best of our ability have a have equal. Uh, opportunity at each of the regions and then the six teams as you had mentioned there the six teams out of each region advanced to Eugene uh, which we're really looking forward to and uh, having a great championship up there. You were at Eugene Country Club last week how do you think that golf course will set up with regards to hosting a great championship for the women? Eugene Country Club is going to be a tremendous test of golf because they can do some things um, first, the golf course is in immaculate condition that we saw up there already. Uh, the groundskeeper, the superintendent has taken, I mean, the, the, and everybody is just doing a tremendous job up there. And then they can do some things with the greens. They can, they can make them a little quick and uh, put some pins in some places and make it a great test of golf. Um, and Eugene has had some great golf tournaments up there with the USGA and the NCAAs in the past. And, uh, it has a history of women's and men's golf there. Peter, we always appreciate the time and looking forward to what is certainly going to be an exciting month in college golf. Steve, thank you to Golf Channel and all you guys do to promote women's golf, and, and we're looking forward to a great championship. And we're looking forward to it as well. Let's get you set for the first regional site, Shoal Creek, Alabama, Shoal Creek Golf Club. It's played host to multiple major championships in years past. Again, 18 teams will compete in each region. Here are numbers one through nine in Shoal Creek. Are you ready for it? Alabama, Northwestern, Oklahoma State, Cal Berkeley, Iowa State, Florida State, Tennessee, Missouri, and Purdue. Again, those are numbers one through nine. Let's head down to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Coach Mick Potter and his team well, they have to be excited about this. They've played so well all season, and there you go. I thought we'd hear some celebration. Ryan, let's start with you. Let's talk about this group, your team to watch. You have to start with the Crimson Tide, the number one overall ranked team. Four wins this season, including the SEC title, and they haven't been worse than third this spring. So they have a lot of momentum now and they really haven't taken a week off, which is exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's the most stressful week. If you have a lot of great finishes to build upon, you can head in that with a lot of confidence. Also look at Purdue, the number nine seed, and they're a very sneaky team, fifth or better in its last five starts, heading into the postseason now. August Kim coming off a career best 67 to win that Big Ten title. Well, I'm gonna piggyback off the conference champions. Alabama obviously won theirs. I take a look at Northwestern and Oklahoma State, a couple of programs that just wrapped up some conference championships, Northwestern co-champs, but it's their second straight and third in the last four years. What a program that is quietly being built up there in Evanston, Illinois, led by Stephanie Lau and Hannah Kim. And then how about Oklahoma State, a big win in the Big 12s. Lisa, I really think if you can play your best golf right now, and those are a couple of the teams I think at this point of the season have to be feeling awfully good about their efforts. All right, so Burko, um, just Alabama and everything that Mick Potter's done, obviously a ton of experience there. They have a national championship already in their program. And it's been a fantastic season, as Lav was talking about. Well, you take a look what Alabama has done this season. The SEC championship, number one in the golf stat poll. The victories, stroke play, and the win at the Liz Murphy. A couple of individuals stepping up as well. Right now, you have to think, if, in terms of checking boxes of where you want to be, that head coach Mick Potter can probably check a lot of those boxes. And speaking of Mick Potter, pleased to be joined by the head coach of Alabama as he is wrapping up his 11th season in Tuscaloosa, more than three decades as a college uh, head coach for the women. And Mick, when we talk about the victories, the, the success that this team has had, how excited about this team are you right now at this point of the season? Well, I'm really excited about this team. Um, you know, we played pretty well in the fall, in the spring. Um, we really have, have gone to another level and um, we've gained a lot of confidence through the success we've had and, and we're really excited to be hosting a Shoal Creek. One of those victories at the Liz Murphy in Athens earlier this spring, a tournament that has been changed format-wise to almost mirror what you'll see at the NCAA uh, championships. 
What does that mean to be able to go there, win that match play portion of the championship in terms of preparing for what you ultimately want to do? Well, I think in many ways, the Liz Murphy is, is more stressful than the national championship just because it's a one day qualifier compared to 72 holes at, at the NCAAs. Uh, so you have to play well one round or, or you're in the consolation bracket. Uh, and then to be able to, to play against Georgia at home on their course was a great test for us. And to uh, play UCLA in the finals, a perennial really strong team um, and be successful, it, it helped us a lot in terms of deciding how we're gonna play match play. One of your players, Emma Talley, the NCAA individual champ from a year ago, wrapping up her college career. How has that victory and her success as a whole sort of raised the level of everyone else around her? Well, Emma has become a great leader for us in, in a lot of ways. And of course, her success uh, on the golf course at NCAAs last year on a really hard and difficult golf course um, has been sort of a, a role model. And, you know, it's, it's made Susan Rosensteel and I, our assistant coach, more in tune with making our practices harder so that when we get to tournaments, it, it almost seems easy. Um, and, you know, obviously Emma always gives us good scores as well. So when we're, we're adding up our lowest four. Uh, she's a big factor for us. At the beginning of this season, Mick, you said you weren't sure what you had with this group. It is now almost May, the regional is upon us. What do you have with this group heading into the most important stretch of the season? Well, it's, you know, it's kind of funny. I was talking to a friend out in California at our first tournament of the spring, and, and he said, well, to have a, a great team, I think you have to have number, three number one players. And at that point, I don't think he was counting Cheyenne Knight. And she went on to finish, I think, top five or six there and then win the Darius Rucker and have a great spring. So I feel like we have four girls and obviously we've got um, three in our top five, top five that have won college tournaments, Emma, LeCarabe and, and Cheyenne. Um, plus Janie's had a great year and was leading us in scoring for most of the year, Janie Jackson. So um, that's been a huge factor for us. And then Nicole Morales has really stepped up and played well this spring as well. Uh, so, you know, we're really confident in our, our one through, really one through seven players, because uh, there's a lot of competition on this team as well, which makes everybody better. Well, make a great season to this point. Congratulations on all the success. And more importantly, thanks to you and the team for joining us and all the best at regionals. Let's finish out this region. The remaining nine teams headed to Shoal Creek, Alabama are Notre Dame, Vanderbilt, Clemson, Michigan, Middle Tennessee State, New Mexico State, Eastern Kentucky, Oakland, and Alabama State. Take a look at Notre Dame. Two wins this year led by senior Talia Campbell, who has the best stroke average in school history. How about Clemson, 12 seed, just the third year of having a program, already their second regional appearance. A lot more still to come tonight on Golf Central 3. More regions, 54 teams to unveil. But Mizzou, they know where they're going. They're excited about their upcoming appearance in Shoal Creek, Alabama and Cal Riverside. Well, they're already conference champions, so we know they're headed to Eugene, but we don't know where. They're watching Golf Central Live, and we'll find out where Cal Riverside is headed later in the show. Golf Central is brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball at the Valero Texas Open. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. Shipsticks, the largest golf bag shipping company in the world, simplifying the way you travel.